Hello everyone, welcome to Indian School of Physics guys. Uh, today I've come with a problem and uh, a new way of presenting it. So here is the problem statement. Uh, let's read it out. Uh, a ball of mass M moves along a concave bridge in the form of an arc of a circle of radius R. So you can see here there is uh, a bridge in the in the form of circle of radius R. A cable of length L is attached to it at the end of which a small load of mass M is fixed. So this is the, uh, you can see here, this is the ball of mass M and here is the cable or a string connected to it or rod connected to it. And this is a uh, another uh, mass of small M which is called as load. All right. So now at the moment when the ball passes the lower point of the bridge, the cable is vertical and the velocities of the ball and the load are equal to v1 and v2 respectively so this is given to you in the figure i hope you can see it and uh, then finally we have to find find the tension force t of the cable and the force with which the ball acts on the bridge at this moment so what we have to calculate is we have to calculate tension force on this cable and the force acting on the ball that is uh, normal reaction between the bridge and the ball so let's discuss the uh, solution for this problem. So here this, uh, this is the situation. So you can see the ball A is moving in a circle of radius R, which is bridge. And now ball B is also moving in combined motion. But here, most of the people will be making mistake that ball B is moving in a circle of radius L plus R, which is not the case here, because it may or may not be possible for a certain velocity of V1 and V2, it may be possible. But in general, they are uh, having uh, different radius. But one thing we can uh, say for uh, surety that if we observe B with respect to A, we are going to see the circular path because this uh, string or thread is under tension. All right. So you can see here in the next diagram, the ball A is having velocity V1 and V2 and tension forces are acting and there is normal reaction on first ball. And Whereas if you see on the second ball, there is only tension as a contact force. We are showing only contact force in this diagram. I hope this is uh, clear to you. In the next part, if you see, we can define angular velocity of B with respect to A. That is angular velocity of rod or cable, which is given by uh, V relative divided by distance between them. So, which is V2 minus V1 by L in this situation. And uh, already I have told you the if B come, uh, if A comes to rest, then B will be moving in a circular path. So, trajectory of B with respect to A is circular in this situation. Now, if you see, if we draw the FBD, uh, FBD of uh, both mass A and mass B, so Mg, then the tension T, which is acting downward, and the normal reaction, which is acting in upward direction. This is the situation for ball a and its acceleration since it is moving in a circle its acceleration will be a1 which is v1 square by r now here on b if you see uh, mg then uh, tension t and pseudo force fp is pseudo force here and uh, a2 is the acceleration of b with respect to a which is going to be uh, since it is circular path it is going to be v2 minus v1 whole square by l Let's discuss further in this part. Already I have explained this uh, free body diagram for B also. Now this FP value is actually, this FP value is M1 uh, times, small m times acceleration of this in opposite direction. So I hope you can see here. And uh, now I'm trying to write this acceleration. Since it is moving in circular path, net force towards the center is going to be n minus t minus mg and that is going to be m a1 which is a1 is v1 is square by i hope this part is clear to all of you let's move further the same free body diagram we are going to use here and you can check you can check here the pseudo force value is actually small m times a1 in downward direction a is moving with acceleration of a1 there is therefore a pseudo force fp is acting on b with respect to the observer on a 
So here I can write this uh, value of pseudo force, which is m times a1, m m v1 square by r, which is known to us in this situation here. Now let's do the final uh, equations for mass A and mass B. And uh, uh, we are going to write equation of A with respect to ground and force equation of A with respect to ground. Whereas we are going to write uh, force equation of B with respect to A. So I hope these two points are clear. We are more comfortable in circular trajectory. So we are trying to use circular path. Path of A with respect to ground itself is given as circular because of constraint motion. Whereas uh, motion of B with respect to A is also circular. So now omega I can define omega of uh, B with respect to A which is V2 minus V1 by L. I have already explained this part. Now equation of motion of A I can write as net force towards the center is equal to M into V1 square by R. So net force is N minus T minus Mg and that is M V1 square. We have already discussed this. Now uh, equation of motion of B with respect to A, we are going to write here and which is circle again. So, uh, it's A2 acceleration is V2 minus V1 whole square by L. I hope this part is also clear to you. So, net force towards the center is T minus NG minus FP is equal to M times V2 minus V1 whole square by L. So, which is given here. Alright, pseudo force value we already know here. So, if we simplify these two equations, we are going to get the value of tension T and we are going to get the value of normal reaction. I hope you have enjoyed this problem. It's a very nice problem and uh, full of concepts. So if you have enjoyed this problem, please leave a like, share this problem with others and subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed it. Uh, thank you. I'll be coming up with uh, more such videos, more such informative uh, videos for G Advanced 2024. Thank you. Thanks for watching this.